I'm going to go ahead and select one, and then I'm just going to go ahead and go to my window pull action, and I can press play. And boom. Notice that uh, all of these have been collapsed just like we did earlier in the edit. All of this has been collapsed. It's hidden the layer, and it's also opened up the brush tool. And all I'm going to do is make sure that the brush is on white. And guess what? We're doing window pull here. I'm just going to brush in the window. Did you see that, guys? Hello, everyone, and welcome to part three of my real estate photography editing series. Today, we're going to be blending by hand, natural light, no flash, three bracket exposures, and we're going to be doing it super quick. We're talking about two minutes or less edit. Now, I'm going to be showing you how to do it and all the concepts. That'll take a little bit longer than two minutes, but after you know what you're doing, you're going to be able to do this super fast. Right now, there's no real way to do this completely automatically yet, but that will come soon. So for now, I'm going to have to teach you how to do it semi-automatically. Let's hop right in to the tutorial. Here we are in Lightroom. These are the raw images that we're going to be working with. We have a middle, dark, and bright exposure. When you guys shoot, you want to make sure that you're shooting something like this to get similar exposures. And this is what we're going to be working toward. Uh, just to explain a little bit here about what this image needs to look like. Notice we have nice natural window pulls. We have good verticals and there's no color casting. Color casting is when we have some of the interior lighting like the tungsten orange lighting casting a darker color on the walls. All the color is very even. So how do we get to this from this? Let's get started immediately. The first thing we need to do in Lightroom is to just adjust some of these exposures so that they look closer together so the blending is a little bit easier. I'm gonna go and take the middle exposure and brighten it up a little bit and darken it. We don't have to adjust too much with the middle exposure. Just gonna adjust a, a little bit of highlights, exposure, and shadows. Now, what we really need to do here is make sure we retain a lot of the information in the dark part of the image, uh, the window specifically. So what I wanna do is raise the interior quite a bit so that, that is uh, more easily seen. I'm just going to use the curves layer as well here, but I'm always going to make sure I'm retaining those nice rich greens and deep blues in the window. And we want to make sure, first of all, that when we shot it, we exposed it properly there. Okay. So I'm just bumping it up and you guys will probably s save a preset uh, if you really want to speed this part up a little bit as well. And now I'm going to go ahead and just adjust this down. This is the bright exposure, reducing the highlights. And that is really all we need to do. In the dark exposure, we were looking at the window. For the bright exposure, we're making sure our walls are well exposed as they should be uh, because we're going to be using this as our base layer in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and select these three by shift clicking. Then I'm going to right click and edit in open as layers in Photoshop. This way, they're all going to open up in the same project and they're going to be open up as layers, which is going to save us time. Always look for ways you can save time when you're editing, folks. And you guys want to learn how to edit, even if you never edit a single image yourself. And I would recommend you guys get outsourcers because once you learn the concepts, it'll help you find the better outsourcers or train your own. Um, so anyway, this will not only make you a better editor, it'll make you a better outsourcer as well. So I'm going to go ahead and reorganize these. How I have this organized is we have... On the bottom, the brightest, then we have the middle, and then we have the darkest right on top, okay? So how we're going to do this, I'm going to select the second layer. And uh, sorry, guys, I'm not teaching basic Photoshop here. If you guys are having trouble sticking with me, just slow it down. So I'm going to select the second layer. I'm going to go to Channels. I'm going to Control-click the RGB. And this is going to make a selection of the windows and the brightest areas of this um Part. Now we need to go select, modify, and then feather. Now I have a hotkey set for this, shift F6. I'm not sure if that comes that way in Photoshop if I've um, changed it over time, but that's how it goes. Shift F6. Now for the first mask or the first selection, we want to do a broader selection that's feathered. So I'm going to do 50 pixels. And you'll notice the selection here, all the marching ants have really smoothed themselves out where they need to smooth out. 
Now we're going to go back to layers and go ahead and select uh, the mask, the new mask. And all of that mask has now been applied to this entirety of the image. Now notice we have already started seeing additional detail in the image. And frankly, guys, just like this doesn't look too bad at all. We're getting some good detail out of the window, but let's say we want to add more detail into the window. I'm going to go ahead and click the top area, the top layer. I'm going to do the same thing. Once again, guys, this requires no pen tool at all. If you guys are using the pen tool or if you're hiring someone who is using the pen tool overseas, they're not going to be able to do it for less because they take way too much time cutting out the windows and cutting out the window panes. It's a pain, right? So this way is a lot faster, a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and right click, excuse me, control click the RGB channel. We have a great selection of the windows again, and then I'm going to shift F6 or feather this, and I'm going to do it a little bit less this time. Uh, let's do, you know, five pixels. Don't hesitate. Just choose something, something a little bit more specific. I can select that layer and then add a mask and boom. Now we have all of the selection that we need. Once again, let's look at these window pulls. We started with this layer. We added a little bit more detail and then we added even more detail there. Now you may think, ah, Jonathan, maybe this is a little bit too strong. We can salt to taste. We can make this salt to taste just by selecting this layer. And if we want to hide some of what's been uh, brought in by this layer, go ahead and make sure your mask is selected. Make sure you press B for brush and the black is selected over here and you can just dull it a little bit. Okay. Just salt to taste there. We're just hiding the mask there on this layer a little bit and it uh, reduces the strength of that layer so it doesn't look too much HDR, right? So that's great, but also we've noticed on the interior here that the interior is a little bit darker than we would like. The mask has affected the walls and things. So how I like to handle this is by going ahead and selecting these two layers, pressing Control G and adding a mask to these two layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add a mask there. I'm gonna press Control I, Control or Command I for inverting it. And that's going to hide everything that we've done in those two layers. And really all I want from those two layers and all those masks is right here in the window. So I'm gonna go ahead and press X so that I have white on my brush. And I'm just gonna brush in the windows. And for the best effect, you guys wanna have you know a lower flow so you can make it really nice and natural. And any area of the image where I want to pull down the exposure a little bit naturally, including the light bulbs, I can do that. And once again, just salt to taste, guys. Salt to taste. If you like strong window pulls, scrub it a little bit more. If you don't like strong window pulls and you like it to make it almost natural, go ahead and just do it lightly. And if you guys go too dark with it, go ahead and press X. It'll switch the brush from uh, white to black. And then you can go ahead and uh, pull it back off right there. But I do like a pretty strong natural window pull. And another thing you guys need to know if you guys get confused about the mask, if you guys are playing hide and go seek black, uh, you want to hide in the dark. So dark or black hides the mask and white shows the mask. All right. So that's window pulls done. Super easy. Did you see how fast that was? Let's go ahead and rep replace the color. What I'm going to do here is shift click the all of these um, layers here. I'm going to press control shift alt E. That's going to not flatten the layers, but merge all the layers and make a new layer with all of our adjustments. Now we need to fix some of the color casting. If you'll notice this nasty uh, uh, yellow tungsten on the Wayne's coating back here in the kitchen, and we have the walls being a little bit irregular. What you can do here is go to image adjustments and then replace color. I never uh, go and use the menus because it takes too long. So I have my own uh, replace color hotkey here. Alt shift control R, Alt R, control shift Alt R there. All right, and this is gonna bring up this window. And what I want to do is make a selection. So I'm going to make a selection where we, we're going to select the area of the image where it has color that we don't want. So that nasty yellow back there, don't want that. And I'm going to click on the um, eyedropper tool and select part of 
the wall as well, and then we can adjust the feather of the mask. Now, it says fuzziness. It's a mask, folks. I don't know why they call it the fuzziness, but uh, anyway, adjust the fuzziness, and then watch closely back here. I'm going to reduce the saturation. We don't want to do this too much. Just, just a nice, nice little bump here, and then maybe raise it a little bit. And you'll notice that all of the color has improved in the walls and in that wainscoting, and we have uh, not done it too much, right? Like it's very natural removal to where it looks natural to the eye. I can go ahead and press OK there. And if you guys do that and it affects part of the image you don't want, guess what? Use a layer, uh, use a mask. So I'm going to press a mask here. I'm going to press Control I to hide it or turn it black. Now, everything here has been undone, but we can bring it right back just by pressing the brush tool. And now I'm just gonna make that color casting go away in wherever I want it to. Or alternatively, we could just show all of the color casting being removed. And let's say we wanna return the uh, color back to the floors. I'm gonna go ahead and press X, make sure my brush is black here. And then I'm gonna hide the adjustments that we did on the floors so that the floors keep their color. Real nice there, right guys? So this is how you very quickly do window pulls and you very quickly fix color casting. Now we could hop right back into Lightroom and adjust the um, verticals and I'll just show you guys how to do that. But notice none of this is automated here. I'm gonna show you the tricks I have to make this boom, lightly quick, uh, lightning quick with the uh, press of a button. So I'm gonna go ahead and X this and save it. It's gonna pull it back into Lightroom. And once it's brought up here in Lightroom, you'll notice all of the changes that we did in Photoshop were saved. Uh, we could make additional adjustments. I'm really happy with where it is. Just don't over edit it, guys. Don't get click happy. All I'm gonna do is fix the verticals. I'm gonna go down to the transform tool. I'm gonna check to see if auto or vertical works best. And I am gonna use the crop tool just to crop in a little bit, but also use the grid to make sure that the verticals are where they should be. And I also don't like the TV kind of uh, peeking in there on the edge. So I'm just gonna crop that in a little bit. All right, and that is how we get it manually. Hopefully you guys learned a new process. I, from what I've seen, this is the fastest way to hand blend images. And I just love the fact that you don't have to use a pen tool. Lightning quick. Uh, that being said, let me show you how to do it even faster. So let's say we uh, went ahead and did the adjustments of the interior images, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that uh, Photoshop version we did. Now we have these three images. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this on a different image, just so you know that I'm not uh, faking this. So I'm gonna make the adjustments really quickly here that we need to make. Gonna bump that up a little bit, raise the shadows, reduce the highlights, just showing you how quick we can do this. Uh, do, go into the dark one, raising that up a ton. Reducing the highlights. Want to make sure the deep blues and the greens are the most important part here, right? So there we go. That's looking good. And then I'm going to the bright exposure and making sure the walls aren't too bright. All right, that looks good right there, and I'll bring a little bit of highlights back. Okay, so now we got these three. This is a little bit of a different uh, shot here. So I'm going to shift-click, select this, right-click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now, watch closely. Remember how we did window pulls and we did color correction. Uh, this is how... All, what I'm using here is a Photoshop action to remember all the things that we just did. And I'm gonna put this in the description for you guys to download for free. Um, all I'm gonna do here is take this dark layer, I'm gonna move it to the top, and this part is important, so focus. I'm gonna double click each name and label these one, two, and three. Now we have our small layers here, our light, middle, and dark. I'm gonna go ahead and select one, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my window pull action and I'm gonna press play, and boom. Notice that uh, all of these have been collapsed just like we did earlier in the edit. All of this has been collapsed, it's hidden the layer, and it's also opened up the brush tool. 
And all I'm going to do is make sure that the brush is on white. And guess what? We're doing window pull here. I'm just going to brush in the window. Did you see that, guys? I just clicked play and then brushed in any area that I want to pull the window in with. And guess what? I have another one for color cast. I can go ahead and press color cast. I'm going to press play. And it's going to go ahead and remove all the color casts. And if you want to adjust it, you can go ahead and select whichever areas you want to adjust. And then you can salt to taste. In case you guys just missed that, with the click of two buttons, I was able to hand blend ambient exposures in Photoshop and correct for the color and all the color casting. So if you guys are taking five or six minutes or more to edit your images in Photoshop, uh, you guys are going to be spending upwards of two to three hours on every shoot. And if you guys are doing three or four shoots a day, you guys won't be getting any sleep or your business will fail. So, so learning how to do everything faster, everything better is really important. I've been teaching my students how to do this for years. So you guys, your guys' competition has been way ahead of you. And that's just from learning tricks from people who truly know what they're doing and have been on the front lines of the industry, mastering their craft and improving their processes for over a decade. So if you guys want to learn how to do more stuff like this, I have 200 tutorials, over 200 tutorials just like this, and we're redoing them all and updating them for the new year. So hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys also want to check out a better scheduling software that makes your life easier, you should check out Real Estate Media Hero because I also designed that scheduling software for photographers, uh, and I made you know the whole process of doing business easier. Also, for this uh, software, you guys retain the image rights of your images. You don't have to share them with, with us, and you guys also have encrypted data for your clients. Uh, there's lots of good stuff there. So check out Real Estate Media Hero. Check out Real Estate Photography Masterclass, and if you guys want more tutorials and how I'm going to teach you how to do 50 cent or less editing per image when you outsource, I will show you how to do that in part four of my editing series. Hope you guys have a wonderful day.